such messy stuff, they say. <laughs> Boat speed, 0 0.7. <clears throat> I just had a look at the um, chart. It says we'll be there in 150 days. So that's good news. I think sailing is a bit like life. It's a bit easy sometimes to think like, this is going nowhere, this is a dead end, this is a bad decision, we're on the wrong tack, and I mean that for the sailing. In life you can feel that way, and then 20 minutes later it's like eight knots are wrong course, right? Which would also be like life, so... I don't know. Drink your perfectly temperatured coffee. <laughs> is temperature a word? It is now. Drink your coffee while you can, right? Man, look at that, the dirty dishes are back there. Ah. Oh, well here we are a couple of hours later on and on the other side of that uh, squall system that we went through, it kind of flattened out for a while but then it became apparent what it was that we've been moving into and we've got a little bit of overcast weather here there's not much more than 15 knots it's really not that uh not that bad at all good little shower for the boat actually an opportunity to cool down um throwing a couple reefs in up front and on the main and just saying long doing five six knots not too bad at all the only thing that's got me really concerned is that the power but it's 12.04 so a 12 volt battery is discharged when it's at 12.4 volts um, you're going below 50 percent of the uh, available charge and that means you're going to a zone where you will damage it long term what's in here now is a couple of cheap um, lead acid batteries normally this boat ran with um, um, lithium ion phosphate batteries <clears throat> the solar charging system's got a problem that we know so I've shut pretty much everything down. The autopilot on the lowest um, power mode, uh, what's called leisure with the, uh, with the Raymarine system is on and this one instrument over here. So we've just got about five knots on there at the moment. We're coming out of a little patch of more breeze. I've got a, a couple of reefs in and uh, I'm just keeping it really toned down. This boat is very fast, it's very light, it's very easy for it to make its way along. It was built for heavy weather, and I know certainly going through the start of the Caribbean 600 this year, bouncing and plying our way through those big waves, uh, I've seen it in heavier wet action, and uh, no issue at all. But Well, I had to include this uh, bit of footage. This is taken from the Caribbean 600 in February of 2023. This was the event that we went all the way down to the Caribbean to do with this boat, and the I'm delivering it back up to uh, New England now. This is the boat at speed. The the owner of the boat watched a couple of these videos of me delivering the boat. He's like, you've got to show it powered up as well, because that's really what it's all about. This is her in a natural, kind of natural situation. This is towards the end of the Caribbean 600, and uh, we'd had we'd had quite a lot of success at this point with the boat getting up to speed, but we were just very aware that we didn't want to push it too hard with the kite up on this last reach and we didn't want to uh, get to pickle so close to the end of such a big project. But she loves that, it's 15, 16 knots all day long. Beautiful. Meanwhile, back in the gloaming, things are even more miserable. All right, we're just a couple of minutes later on. <clears throat> I just thought I'd share with you something that is an important part of uh, these kind of weird weather conditions for me. I want to go north, right? So if I look kind of, uh, which way are we pointing here? We're pointing 300, obviously ignore the course over the ground. That's just where the boat's moving. But 300 means that 300, like north is over there somewhere. Now if we look out, I don't know if this will pick up on here, but there is a thin light line between the horizon. The horizon's often darker because you're forced for shortening any wind or wave action out there but it's a light bit and that light bit is literally the gap below the clouds where the clouds are like this and are heavy and grey and the sea is heavy and grey and then there's a light strip and that's the other side of whatever's coming on if you look out there and it's dark at the horizon there's more weather 
or there's worse weather. But if you look out and there's like a dark, dark, dark sea and then light bit and then dark, dark, dark in the sky, that light bit means that you're probably getting to the other side of something, which could be, well, we've got this rain here as well now. We've got an occlusion where we've got, um, is that the right word for such a, for a squall? Does a squall have an occluded edge? I don't know, you've got warm air and cold air mixing together. The cold air inside this thing, i.e. I've got my jacket and my hat and it's chilly. And then the rest of the time we've been at sea, it's been like 30 degrees Celsius. So have we moved into a big new weather pattern? Well, that's not forecast. Could we be getting to the other side of the squalls? Maybe, maybe there's just a big kind of squall system. I don't know. Oh, look, here comes a bird. I wonder what that is. I don't know much about birds. I kind of, uh, well, actually, you know what? I actually love birds. Uh, when I'm at home, I have an app called Merlin on my phone. If you haven't seen this, it's brilliant. And it will, through my phone, it will listen to the birds around me and then tell me which birds are calling and it will light them up and show which one's calling at which different times and educate you about the birds. At sea, I know nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. But they are such a, you know, something's alive and it's here. One thing I haven't seen, I have not seen a single dolphin or porpoise on this trip. Interesting. I wonder if that's because it's a multi-hull and there's not so much of a pressure wake ahead of it. It's not as interesting to them. Hmm. Yeah, I've never seen a, Jesus, this thing's so low down. You, <laughs> you wouldn't want to meet a pod of dolphins that'll end up on the trampolines. All right, well, we've hove to, we've turned around, we're going the wrong way, there's no wind, the low battery, the coffee's getting cold. I think we'll be fine. We've got lots of water on board in uh, bottles, but it's getting lower. But the water in the tank tastes quite tanky, right? You know what that is. In the end, that ends up unpotable. So I just tasted this. The, we had showers all morning, so the sail's got almost no salt on it. So it's a pretty simple catch. If you have a piece of sail like this that regularly ends up in a bag and regularly ends up with water, you should consider putting a little uh, eyelet in it and then you can catch water from it. You can even get, I saw a friend who had eyelets where you could put a piece of clear hose and they jammed into the eyelet and it'd just go up into the bag by about a quarter of an inch and then the hose would come down and he could collect water out of any part of the sail. I once ran out of water for two weeks crossing the equator racing. Mind me to tell you the story sometime, but uh, I finally, when it finally rained, the, it was a squall, massive squall and the sails were completely reefed. And I remember jumping into the bag on the sail. Actually, I feel kind of emotional thinking about it and getting in there and just drinking, drinking, drinking. I'd been drinking uh, about, I was able to make about 200 milliliters of uh, fresh water per day and then add it to salt water to create something I could drink. It was either that or stop racing, so. Look at that, it's, it's not perfect. A piece of strings here, just in case the kettle decides to fall off. Hey, boom, stop moving around. But that's a cup of tea coming up, right? Do what you can. Okay, well, 20 minutes later, water's still running out, but we have got this. <laughs> What's that, like four liters? As we go north of Bermuda, that's four days rationed water. South of Bermuda, that's like two days rationed water. For doing what? capturing something that was happening anyway while we're having coffee. I did think afterwards, you know, I forget how small this boat is. You could just go inside there with a scoop and just scoop it out much quicker. But all that's come to an end. You, a little bit more wind now. We're on course. We need about 350 for where we're going. So looking good there. There's something else going on here now, which we can kind of expect. Hey, come on. The lightning and thunder have suddenly got shy, but there's thunder coming from down there about 220. And uh, I don't know if you're picking that up. Thank you. Uh, so what I've done is I've lifted the engine out of the water and stopped it. And I guess there's an opportunity for us to chat a little bit about 
lightning at sea, which you know makes people nervous. I've, I've been hit by lightning once, not me personally, but the boat, um, alongside the dock in um, Qingdao. And that was probably because the boat that I was on had an earthing system which was connected to the uh, to the shore power earth, which meant that there was a really good way for the power to get down and into the uh, back into the ground through the boat. At sea like this, there's no particular reason why I would want to go into the boat because the boat actually is more of an issue for it to pass through than just hitting the surface of the water. What's different is if the boat has built up itself up a um, static charge from its movement through the water. Now you can't really do much about that. You can stop the boat entirely, put the sails down, but you know we are moving away from it, so I feel like this is a good situation. But what I can do is stop the engine. Engines build up a lot of static charge, as do generators, and just get everything out of the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the boat because worst case scenario, um, the boat gets hit by lightning. That would mean then that the entire um, exterior of the boat would be electrified to some degree or other. And there's a lot of reported, ca no, there's reported cases of people's thigh muscles going into an involuntary spasm, which would then jump off the boat. So if I have to be on deck, I need to be clipped on, which is always possible. But uh, as I don't need to be on deck, I've got reefs in the main and a jib pulling. We're doing seven knots for a bang on course. I think we'll take uh, today's winnings from the water take ourselves inside go and do the washing up see the flashes there three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so let's call it 18. So four, five, six, so we have to remember four seconds, one kilometer away, five seconds, one mile away, six seconds, one nautical mile away. So that's three miles away. Now previously I was getting counts of 12. And we're doing uh, five knots basically away from it from what I can tell. Now this could be 30 miles across, but we are getting further from it. So that's a good feeling, right? It's not about getting nervous in these situations, it's about having a plan. Like, I have dried the bottom of my feet off. The seat that I'm sat on is dry. I guess I'm a bit wet. All the wet is outside there. The engine is off. The boat is only going slowly. I could be doing eight, nine knots now. There's two reefs in the main. So there's very little chance of uh, this being a good option for lightning, but using superior judgment, right? <laughs> Got a corned beef meal I wanna have for dinner, like I wanna get to dinner. <laughs> okay, well, just to go through a couple of things that we're doing there. Um, I had been motoring previously uh, as I went into the Lightning. I turned off the engine. Engines do tend to create quite a lot of uh, static charge. There's a lot of parts running around against each other and it starts to create a um, a point that may be of more interest to the lightning to hit than the open ocean. The thing that gets me more nervous on this boat is that we've got a carbon fiber mast and we don't have any kind of lightning conductors, racing boats don't have that. So if you get hit, it's a big zap and it's gonna be serious. Look how serious this guy is. Even coming out for a look-see. Oh, what a goody two-shoes. Connect yourself on if there's a worry. If there's any kind of worry of lightning, you want to be connected to the boat at all times. This is mostly sheet lightning rather than fault lightning. This is just up in the sky. It's just warm and cold air masses mixing together. It's a good uh, reminder. You know, it's important to take uh, preventative measures <laughs> rather than getting electrocuted. My ex-wife's grandmother was electrocuted through a window while she was using a spinning wheel. I guess the spinning wheel was developing a static charge. She was electrocuted through the window. So I don't mess around with lightning. 
Come on, you gotta love this. <laughs> the, uh, the reason I am basically wearing my underpants for most of this at the moment is that I got sunburned the other day. The trouser shorts are really like kind of irritating my legs, but incredible freedom of movement. <laughs> Good to do different things, you know? Wander around in your underpants only. But if you find that you're at home and you're drinking beer at 10 in the morning in your underpants, that's, that's the wrong kind of underpants uh, strategy. It still freaks me out standing on these trampolines at sea. Like that's the ocean right there. If anything goes wrong, I'm through. Well, I'm obviously, I'm attached to a piece of Dyneema with a braking strain of 7,000 kilos on a tether that's got a braking strain of 2,000 kilos. So I don't think I'm going to like fall off the boat, but you always got this feeling like you're about to disappear through the nets. Oh look, you can see the centerboard down there. What I want to do now is have a look at this meat. We are, we are like five days, six days out. Oh yeah, baby! Woo! Well, thank goodness for that. Looks like we got the meat as far as we possibly could. A good meal at the end of a difficult day really sets you up for success. Maybe fridges are good. Maybe fridges are good, yeah, you dim wit. You're the only person out there sailing without it. Now, what's this? Oh yes, this is the reality of how you actually eat your meal when you've got very low power after you've done your filming. Thank you.